Hello, it's Tom Donald from the London Contemporary School of Piano. Well, today I'm going to show you how to play with more groove on the piano. How to become a groove master. But what does it really mean? What does the word groove mean? How do you define groove? Well, the problem with words like groove, they come from the artistic realm. And right, words that come from the artistic realm are not scientifically measurable. So today I'm going to translate elements of groove in a basic way so that you can add it to your playing and implement it into your music and have some understanding of what is this undefinable concept. Groove. And if you like our work at the London Contemporary School of Piano, you should head on over to our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com, and ask about our free resources pack, which will give you a whole bunch of wonderful resources that will support a lot of these videos we have on YouTube. Another thing as well, if you visit our website, and if you're really serious, you should ask for our Groove Pack. Our Groove Pack is just a mere 25 uh, US dollars or 20 British pounds, uh, whatever currency you use. Um, and it will be a wonderful supporting resource for today's video, which is going to insert groove into your plane. In fact, I wouldn't call it a video. I'm going to call today a mini course. It really is that. And by you heading on over to our website and uh, supporting us, um, that gives us the facility to keep creating more uh, wonderful free videos for you on YouTube. So um, it's a great way to support us, but it actually more or less supports yourself now, if you are a groove master already, I'm just gonna tell you, we're going over some basics today. We're gonna to get the basics of groove today. We're not gonna, this is not the doctorate of groove, right? Um, though I'm gonna give you some slightly more challenges uh, before the end of the video. So you can, you can always scroll through if you wanna have a look. Groove tends to be repetitive. It tends to be a repetitive pattern that puts the listener into a a state of relaxation, enjoyment, a state of focus, a state of meditation, but not always just a relaxed meditation. It could be a state of party. It could be getting someone into the zone, getting the listeners into this musical zone where they're moved and they're inside the music and the communion of the listener and the player are all in it together, inside the music, inside the groove. In that sense, it's a magical thing. Now we know on a technical level that it will tend to be repetitive. The rhythm will have a beautiful stability about it. So many of you might have played lead sheets before and you know you might just get a normal chord progression that's in 4-4 four, four time. And you might play a lot of your music like this, which yeah, that is a technically a type of groove, but it gets a little ploddy after a while, doesn't it? So we're going to bring our chord progressions to life today. And I've got, I've put together this wonderful groove dictionary that's really going to help you. And this groove dictionary is just a bunch of examples that you can use. And again, if you, if you purchase our Groove Saturday course and our groove dictionary um, materials, again, it's just a mere 25 US dollars. Um, you will be able to uh, practice this to backing tracks to really help you lock into the groove. So let's have a look at some of these basic grooves that we hear in a lot of famous songs. I wouldn't even say they're the best ones, um, but they're just popular ones that people know. And these are ways you can arrange your chords. Now, something to bear in mind, you can put these groove patterns on any chord progression that you want. It doesn't have to be these chords that are suggested here. These are just chord suggestions, but it could be any chord progression you apply this to because they're just used by musicians in songs and the songs become popular and the grooves get used, but they've never been given an actual name. Groove is really still in its infancy of, of understanding and teaching. So I call this first one the Abbey Road 4-4. What it effectively is, is it's a broken chord where we start with the top two notes of the chord and we swing down like this. And this is how I'm playing the D major chord.
So we could just choose any chord progression we wanted to and we could apply that groove to that chord progression. Could be, let's say, I don't know, F major, E flat major, B flat major, F major. And yes, you can apply this to inversions or you could do it entirely on root chords. But this is a nice little simple rhythmic trick when you're playing ballads. It's a great groove for ballads. It's a good escape from that typical one, two, three, four groove, which gets a little bit repetitive and boring after a while. And also grooves should never be played in a robotic way. Uh, so you might have noticed I was putting a bit of a lilt on the top note, the top two notes there. Just sort of felt appropriate to that groove but of course there's not just one way to play a groove it can be voiced and expressed in different ways so it's a really about locking into the rhythm i think the most fundamental law of groove if there is one is stay in time don't get faster don't get slower keep it really consistent and really lock in um, to the music, like you're locking into the rhythm section of a band, you know, in a great band, the drum and the bass player, they're locked in it together, they're locked in the music and you really want to lock those two hands together. Even if you're playing little variations of the groove, that's great if you're changing the bass line around, improvising a bit. That's absolutely fine, you know, to start experimenting with things like that, as long as you're timing it's really consistent and, and that allows the audience to lock in with you with the groove. I'm really going to sort of the old school 60s, 70s stuff for this just as a, as a starting point. Um, but it goes well beyond this. This is, uh, I call this the tapestry funk. This is just a nice, simple way. Actually, the notation looks far more complex than what it sounds. I think groove is really an ear type of music. Um, uh, but this is a nice way to just add a bit more variation and rhythm to a chord pattern you're playing. You could, again, apply this to just about any universal chord pattern. It will sound great. So it's a little bit of a shuffle. I want you to really pay attention to the right hand here. So we've got this. One, two, three, four. 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 Now I can really add a lot of variation to that left hand. Once my right hand is starting to feel that groove, and by the way, learning to groove is a bit like learning to dance, right? You're using your body when you groove. It's a body thing. And it's like you're dancing with the music. You want to spend a bit of time. I've designed these beginner grooves, so to speak, to, to just sort of teach your right hand to, um, to, to dance it out first because many of you will be right-handed. So... Um, uh, so it's a good starting point to just really train that right hand. By the way, where am I clicking when I click along to this? I'm clicking on the second and fourth beat of the bar, if you notice. One, two, three. That is really a great example of the of the 20, 21st century jazz, rock, pop, R&B, um, African-American music paradigm is that we feel the beat on the second and fourth beat of the bar, not the first and third like you would if you're listening to a Mozart piece. I mean, imagine me clicking to this on the first and third beat of the bar as if I were playing a Mozart piece. It would sound like this. bit of a groove killer right unless it's the right piece of music I mean if it's you know one. that works well right and that's that's a viable groove there's such thing as classical grooves right a groove is really simply just a rhythm pattern a rhythm template that gives a certain feeling and some pieces of music feel the question is where do you tap your foot if you're tapping your foot on the second and fourth beat of the bar 
it's probably meaning that the music is pushing you that that direction and a lot of contemporary music will push you in that direction and by the way there's nothing worse than clicking on the first and third beat of the bar when the music is really meant to feel like it's on the second and fourth beat of the bar so then when we add the left hand the left hand can actually play around with the rhythm it doesn't have to be as i've notated it there i can start adding little fills and improvisations a little more advanced but once you've got that right hand down that just just so you know there's a bit of flexibility there this is a more simple one so i'm going back to a little bit more simple Um, and i think it's important to have more simple grooves Um, so the dotted ballad groove here uh, this is great for ballads and rather than just playing your ballads like this one two three just starts to get a bit predictable so this dotted ballad we put um, some dotted rhythm in and so it sounds like this again you could apply this to any chord pattern you want to it doesn't have to be these chords it's just the example I put here many great grooves to learn by the way and this document and this uh this uh dictionary and switchboard that i have created to insert groove into your plane it's part of my groove saturday course and i call it groove saturday because there's nothing better than getting up on a saturday and switching on your groove in fact you want to be doing that every day but um if you'd like to head on over to our site contemporary school of piano you can gain access to this course for just a mere 25 us dollars And it also helps support our wonderful uh, research and development that we're undertaking at the London Contemporary School of Piano to ensure that the world has access to our cutting edge methods of teaching piano Um, because there's so much to music and playing piano. And I I don't think we've, in traditional education, have even touched the surface on all the dimensions of creating music. So um, now if you purchase the course, you also get backing tracks of all of these grooves and you get access to a whole bunch of grooves don't worry we're going to do a few more i'm not just giving you a promo here um i really feel strongly about this stuff uh wow there's so many here and i'm constantly updating it let's start with three plus three plus two first this is a this is a nice contemporary one that um i mean you hear a lot of bands like coldplay use it i mean it's usually a lot of songs a lot of songs um so i call it three plus three plus two because it's a way of breaking the chord in a bar with just eighth notes or quavers um we can we can break up a triad in this configuration one two three now it's still got four beats to the bar but i'm breaking it up i'm breaking up the chord three times but the last time it's only in a group of two so the group is three plus three plus two Now I'll put some rhythm to that and I'm going to access my thumb on the D to really highlight this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Gonna get a little faster just to demonstrate. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Let's add the left hand. you the feel of it um now if we really want to pump this one up 
I'm going to go a little faster and then I'm going to add that left hand. By the way, this groove is great with lots and lots of pedal. Can you see? I've got my pedal straight to the floor there. So we're going to play it like this now. This is, not a, this is not an exercise in taste. This is an exercise in technicalities. Your taste is individual to you and you want to focus on practicing the grooves that resonate with you. So I wanted, that's a very important disclaimer, right? Um, because this is education we're talking about here. Um, this is about understanding the formula of groove. So, oh, there's so many here. Well, let me just say this very specifically. When we talk about a reggae groove, reggae has a tends to have this formula where you really hear the rhythm section playing the chords on that second and fourth beat of the bar. One, two, three, four, one. And it, you know, it, it's meant to really put that listener in that zen-like state. It's, the, it, it's just become so set in stone. I put a very generic bass line here. I mean, if you're a reggae fan, you might not like this bass line. Why have I put a generic bass line in? Because a student's going to have to learn to coordinate this on a piano first before they start doing the really, really cool stuff. So that, that's the reality. When you're learning something for the first time, you've got to go a bit generic. And then you dig deeper. And then you start to add magic to it. Magic doesn't happen overnight. And by the way, if you want to get the magic in, don't stop. See, don't just play. So many of you, I see this all the time. So many of you I know are just practicing eight bars and then you stop and then you assess what it is you're doing. If you want to master a groove like this, you've got to not stop. You've got to set the clock for 10 minutes. And, and if you say, oh, but that's boring, I can't just play this beat for 10 minutes. Well, if that's boring to you, well, then it's just because you're playing in a boring way. So how are you going to play in a non-boring way? By playing for 10 minutes non-stop, right? <laughs> it's the only way to get there. It's just by, you've got to go into that groove marathon. So I'm going to start by being a bit generic here and then I'm going to dig a bit deeper and I've just got to keep my focus and try and not get faster. You know, wish me luck. along with me if you're sitting at a piano feel that rhythm I'm not going to get the, the Bob Marley soul coming out of that straight away. It's going to take time and practice and context as well because this music, another big difficulty with piano, this music is band music, right? We've got the drums, we've got the bass, we've got guitar and I'm, I'm sort of simplifying it down to piano but for an accompaniment for a piece of music, it's often what we have to do on piano. So these skills are so, so important. And by the way, many advanced pianists can't do something like that. It's really, really hard for them because... You can see there's not many notes there, but it's the placement of the notes. It's the dynamics of the note. So as you can see on this uh, groove dictionary, I've included some, some really rarely taught grooves, even like these sort of Elton-y ones, like these piano pop ballads. Very rarely taught and very rarely notated. So this is really... Um, just come across even on sheet music it's very rarely written out precisely as to what it is and there's some nice variations on these ones so let's finish with a samba i mean this is one of the most ultimately challenging ones i think um but this is great i mean i think when you start to study things like samba 
it opens up groove doors for you, right? It gives you so many opportunities. So let's finish off with a samba together. I'm going to give you a little trick. Can we start with the right hand? How do we get a samba happening? Because counting is not going to help us. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It just confuses us more because it's so syncopated. So courtesy of a student I once had, a little child, the child once suggested a nice rhyme that was phonetic, and I've stuck to it ever since. It's a great one. A Monday, I just bought a goldfish. Tuesday, I just bought a goldfish. Monday, I just bought a goldfish. Tuesday, I just let's add the left. variations of this samba rhythm in so much contemporary pop music even all the way to Motown to R&B soul hip-hop um, rock so there's it's really like it's a portal to so many other grooves that's why samba is like a really great almost like a classical type of groove that we can insert into so many different types of music um, well I could talk about groove all day I haven't even scratched the surface so and if you're really serious about developing some great groove skills, two ways you can do it. You can head on over to our site and you can purchase our Groove Saturday and our um, course and our Groove Dictionary and all of our backing tracks and groove resources associated to the Groove Dictionary that I've created. And that will cost you a mere 25 US dollars or 20 uh, pounds, British pounds or whatever currency you're in, that equivalent. Or if you're really serious, you can go a step further and uh, inquire about our Complete Musician Piano Essentials course, which also has a fully dedicated groove module and much, 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 much more. Um, and you can find out more about the course as well by clicking the description link um, and or just by visiting our website, contemporaryschoolofpiano.com. Um, drop us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And we really appreciate your support um, in all the work that we're doing and I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. <laughs>